Communication is truly the bedrock for patient care. Clear and effective communication is essential for quality care and the safety of all of your patients, including deaf and hard of hearing people. When deaf and hard of hearing person has to try to understand what you are attempting to explain, or if you are attempting to understand what the deaf and hard of hearing person is trying to tell you, but you don't comprehend each other, communication has broken down. And to me, that is not effective communication. Effective communication means when you have two people sharing a message, expressing it and receiving it and comprehending the message. That is the most important part of the communication, the comprehension. Then you can say that communication has been effective. When you are working with deaf and hard of hearing patients, please keep in mind that no one size fits all in terms of communication needs in the deaf and hard of hearing community. We are as diverse as the general public. It all depends on our background and the onset of our hearing loss. So our communication needs and requirements vary greatly. For deaf people who were born deaf, we tend to use American Sign Language. That is our first language and English is actually our second language. For those who lose their hearing later in life through an accident or an illness, extreme noise, perhaps disease, they tend to speak for themselves and they don't usually sign, but they do have difficulty hearing and that is where they will need an assistive device to help them to hear. This video will guide you on how you can communicate with the deaf and hard of hearing patients effectively. For any or all of the deaf and hard of hearing patients you serve, we suggest and strongly encourage setting up a preference sheet or a communication plan. That form would be for us, the deaf people, to fill out and let you know our communication preferences, what aids we need, and what kind of services we require. And when I talk about aids, it could be an assisting, assistive listening device, it could be an iPad or tablet, or it could be a video app. As for services, it could be either that the person needs captioning services or they need a live interpreter. Also on that form, it would let you know how we would like to be alerted or how we would like to be notified, whether through the phone or through the mail. Those kinds of details would really resolve a lot of the challenges that you might face with your deaf and hard of hearing patients. Do take that form into your plans as a part of the medical record that you keep for each patient. Make sure that that form is also available online. Suppose I am looking for a new primary care physician and I find one, it would be wonderful if I could just type in my profile. And if it asks if I am deaf or hard of hearing and I check yes, it would automatically lead me to that communication needs and preference form so that I can fill it right there online and send it in. With the communication needs and preference form, when I call to schedule an appointment, or perhaps I go to make an appointment online. That information could come right up into your system and then your staff would be able to see that they need to make sure that all of the aids and devices are ready in the office to provide to the person when they arrive. 
And if they need a sign language interpreter that you have gone ahead and contacted a referral service and requested one to come to the appointment to interpret the conversation between you and your patient. I also recommend for your office staff uh, to take a cultural competency training or to just review a cultural competency training with deaf and hard of hearing people. Do that on an annual basis or whenever someone new is hired to expose them to our population and our needs so that they know that when they get our call or when we request to make an appointment online, they will know and recognize what to do and be able to meet our needs. Before the deaf and hard of hearing patient arrives for their appointment, be sure to have your staff or head nurse check to make sure that the communication preferences and needs are ready and available, whether that's a device or whether that's a sign language interpreter. Make sure that you have requested an interpreter and confirmed that the interpreter will be there at the appointment. Second, you should also know each deaf person's preference about how they'd like to be called when they're ready to be seen. And when we come into the room with an interpreter or with any assistive device, like an iPad or a tablet, when we are going back and forth writing, or using it as a speech to text app for hard of hearing people because they tend to speak for themselves. And when you return comments, they would need to be able to see the comments on a screen. Whatever those communication needs are in your office, it would be critical that you keep your eye contact with the patient even if there is a sign language interpreter there, please be sure to communicate directly with the deaf or hard of hearing patient. Do not look at the interpreter and say, tell him or tell her. That will not make communication very clear. Deaf people are visual and they're very visual learners. So eye contact is truly important to us. And please make eye contact with us just the same as you would with any hearing person. That includes my language, my body language, my facial expression. Often people act if they understand when you're trying to explain the nodders, the person who just nods and smiles. That is often an indication that that person truly does not understand what you're explaining. It's important that you take the time to ask them a question to make sure that they have understood what you've explained to them. Also, similar to any patient, make sure that you give all of the information in writing to each deaf and hard of hearing person for them to be able to take home and read at a later time, or they will have someone else translate that information for them. Again, I cannot stress enough it is critical to have communication, effective communication, and a communication needs and preference sheet in place in your office. It will make your lives and your relationship with your deaf and hard of hearing patients much easier because that information will keep you informed and to make your staff know what your deaf and hard of hearing people need. And we wanna make sure that a communication is as effective as it can be.